Brandon, I tell you, uh, you guys have just released your ninth full-length studio album, "The Beautiful Dark of Life." Yeah. That's pretty prolific. That's that's a lot of records. You know, we're we're definitely uh, it's not lost on us. That is a lot of records. Now that you bring it up, <laughs> I'm gonna need to talk to someone about that. I didn't realize there were so many records. Yeah, is that like ages? Am I not supposed to mention that? <laughs> no, we put out one every six months, and we started three years ago. So. <laughs> yes, yeah, so, so prolific is definitely the right word there. Uh, how's the report, uh, the approach to recording changed over the years for you? Is there anything new or different uh, that you applied on this album? Absolutely. I think not necessarily just for the la- this album, but for the last few, um, you know, back in the day when we were, you know, just starting the band, we were kids, it was like, you get in a room, you jam, hey, I got this riff, let's make a song out of it. You know, let's go play it at the show this weekend, see how the crowd likes it. And then, you know, six months later, maybe go and make a record. Um, I think once you're obviously in the, the, the kind of like hamster wheel of the music industry, you know, changes. And I think a lot of it now, we all live in different places. I, I live in Nashville. Our bass player lives in Germany. Uh, some of us live in Southern California. So it's kind of the thing where <clears throat> at this point, you know, the, the five of us get into a studio together. And when it's kind of time to, to write, we get together. We, you know, everyone kind of has their ideas they've been working on or things they've been working on. And every day it's kind of just like, what's everyone got? And we pick an idea for the day and run with it. So it's very much more kind of like shoot from the hip style of writing. Um, but I've found that it allows our music to kind of sound a lot more current without even trying, without having the agenda to do so, because literally it's always just like, what are we thinking today? Like, what are we writing and what do we want to do right now? You know, there's never like, it's it's as current and and like in the moment as it can be. Yeah, awesome. So I guess that yeah, as you said, it's definitely a way to, to keep current, keep fresh, uh, keep getting new ideas under the table. Because uh, mm-hmm. I I know uh, from reading a few different like interviews and things that you guys have done in the past that sort of in the the early days it was kind of like. Uh, Atreyu trying to find yeah their identity and what what was the sound of Atreyu and I kind of mm-hmm. kind of like the idea that the, the sound of Atreyu is it's just inherently ever evolving. Yeah, like I think we've 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 a long time ago we sort of gave up on what that was supposed to be. You know, mm-hmm. um, it's like at the end of the day we're we're making art and it's like you can't but putting yourself in a box just limits you to what you can accomplish or what you can create so it's like we've we you know i think year, years ago at this point we kind of took the took the box down and we're like oh mm-hmm. we're not a, a this band or a that band or it's not a metalcore band or a rock band or a metal band or a hardcore band or whatever it may be it's just like let's just be a band and make whatever the fuck we want and yeah. um so luckily at this point i, I think that fans of the band understand that and, and expect that from us and it's not like we're you know we're not tool we're not like going off the rails and like you know doing like insane crazy things but at the end of the day there's 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 a, a wealth of uh kind of freedom to do whatever we want which is nice yeah awesome. and what, as long as whatever ends up in the box is a box full of sick riffs you're going to be all right yeah there's always there, whether we try to or not there's there's the atreyu is going to shine through you know what i mean like it's going to have my voice on it and it's going to have Dan's, you know, guitar solos, or it's going to have Travis's kind of like obscure bits Order screams going to be in there somewhere. Like there's going to be those things that are, that are always going to be familiar. Um, even on the most like left field songs that we end up coming up with sometimes there's still that familiar element where you're like this. Oh, I know who this is, you know? Yeah. Unmistakable. So you'll then be touring Australia uh, next month in February to support yeah. the new album. Uh, mm-hmm. Do you have any fun or memorable moments from previous visits to our shores? Or is there anything that you've been meaning to do or see here that you haven't had a chance to do yet? Memorable experience have, have been all and any uh, time we've ever been to Australia uh, without exaggerating um, across the board. Like it, it's it, Australia is a unanimous like favorite of, of all of ours. Um, so anytime we kind of get the opportunity to come back down, it's, we're very excited. Obviously, like we haven't been since 2019, um, for obvious reasons, but it's been way too goddamn long or Mm -hmm. 2020 actually really, I I guess we were, I think we were in like Perth airport flying home from the last time we were there in 2020. And it was like on the news, it was like first COVID, uh, 
you know, first COVID contact in Melbourne, Australia, you know, that's yep. the first case in Australia. And we were like, glad we're getting out of here. And then <laughs> dodge that bullet, you know, naively went back to the States and everything went to hell, but it's been way too long. So we're very, very excited. Yeah. I'm glad you mentioned Perth there because of it being one of the most remote major cities in the world, <laughs> Not too many artists that come to Australia, uh, make the effort essentially to go there. So um, I'm sure you've got a whole bunch of fans in Perth that are super stoked that you, yeah, take take the time and the effort to, to get over to that side of Australia. I feel like we've never missed it. I feel like it's always been on the list. It's one of those things where, like, we feel bad because, I mean, as every band, it's like we come down to Australia and we're so close to New Zealand and we very rarely go to New Zealand. So I think the New Zealand fans are probably hate us. But it's yes, like those guys. there's always an understanding of, like, how much it cost just to like take a short flight over and play your your different country you know yeah but it's like um yeah we're, we're stoked perth has always perth has always gone off for us so it's got to be on the list yeah wicked and yeah new zealand i love you beautiful beautiful country one of the best in the world all right so um <laughs> both in a you and as a solo artist you've known to do uh, a fair few amount of different covers uh, is there any covers that you guys are working on at the moment or have you considered covering any songs by Australian artists? Man. So we, we have a few covers kind of in the tank that I won't, I won't announce yet, but we, we've, we've recorded a handful of them, um, for kind of like a special release that'll happen later in the year. Um, we, one thing we did start doing live and, um, I believe we'll we'll probably end up doing it in Australia too. Is um, back in back in the winter of, of last year, we were in in the UK and Europe, and we were on tour with Golden My Valentine, and we um, had this bit where I would like kind of get the crowd singing, you know, on the last song, and like, oh, I'll give you this, you know, kind of back and forth, and then I would start singing Whitney Houston, and then uh, we would start playing the song. And then, like, stop and be like, come on, guys. Like, this is a metal show. We're not going to play Whitney Houston. And people got fucking pissed. Like, they were, like, <laughs> mad. Um, so Give me my Whitney. <laughs> we did this thing where it was like, all right, cool. Well, if you, you know, we're going to come back and do a headline tour at the end of the year. If you guys come back, we'll play the whole song. So on the yeah, entire no. last European and UK tour, that was, uh, we were doing, we were encoring with, with I Want to Dance with Somebody. And uh, it's it's done very differently. It's it's done very on a tray you, um, mm-hmm. but it's a goddamn party. So um, that that one that one I feel like will be holding strong in the live repertoire as much as possible. Yeah, sick. So, so how, how about the Australian? <laughs> how about the Australian other side of things? Any any uh, dude? I don't know. Like in I, uh, I mean, I would love to do like a. I mean. <laughs> Like, uh, that'd be cool to do some like random, like Daniel Johns cover or something. Yeah. What's yep. the, what's the, the band? Who, like, like a dissociative cover or something like that. Yeah. Yep. Uh, it would be cool. Um, but yeah, there's, we actually, this is like a, I mean, it's funny because Billy Eilish did it, but whatever. We did it more obviously. <laughs> um, we, uh, we had come across this the first time we were ever in Australia. As every metal band does, you press the crosswalk and it plays a blast beat. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and when, so, like, <laughs> the whole time, every every time we're crossing the street, we're like, you know, doing like death metal vocals and, and like, you know, death metal guitar riffs with our mouths. So, yeah. on our new album, there's a song called "I," and uh, we finally, after like 20 years of trying to find a place, uh, just straight up sampled the crosswalk. So, like, yeah. in the song, it's like very obvious. It's high in the mix. Like, the, it, it mm-hmm. it's in there. So, I'm excited to play that song. I hope that people feel a little bit of Australian soul in that one. Yeah, sweet. I'll have to uh, go back and, and uh, listen close for that one. Oh, uh, it's very obvious. Otherwise, uh, just to up your ante, see if you can sample the sound of a Westfield shopping center evacuation alarm going off. <laughs> what does that sound like? <laughs> uh, if you visit a Westfield while you're here in Australia, you'll probably find out for yourself. <laughs> <laughs> Do they, get, they tend to get evacuated a lot? Or? Uh, just kids pulling fire alarms, I think. Oh, man. <laughs> that's, good. that's the next that's for the next record <laughs> yeah that's it keep that one in the bag yeah so uh 
Over the course of Atreus, uh, given numbers away here, 20 plus year history, uh, you've had hiatus and member changes to contend with. Uh, given the largely positive response to the new album from review sites, how are you feeling about the future of the band going forward? Um, strangely, it feels like more optimistic than I think it ever has. Um, I think that there's a belief within the band um that's stronger than it's ever been but um you know it's it's not lost on us what is happening and it's a it's a strange and unusual thing for a band to put out as much music as we have have been around for as long as we have and have a situation where like you put out a new album and you go and you play a show and the new songs are being sung just as loud as the old songs mm -hmm. so it's like a it's a weird thing that we we're very fortunate to be having happen right now. Um, so I feel like, you know, I think that all the things that have ever happened in our band, all the hardships we've faced and going on hiatus and having member changes and having to kind of like rebuild at times and like really kind of like dig ourselves out of the dirt at times has led us to a place where we're like internally, like kind of feel untouchable. You know what I mean? Like, yep. um, and I think that it, it like, the growth and the momentum that's happening in our band right now feels like it did like when we put out like the curse or death grip, you know what I mean? Like it feels like that era of your band that like a lot of people only live once, but we're like strangely reliving it. Yes. You know, which is, is cool. Like we're, it's, 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 a, it's an awesome feeling. Yeah. And as long as at the end of the day, you're, you're doing it with love, uh, doing yeah. it with passion, then you're doing it for the right reasons. I mean, I always tell people, I just like, if you listen to our music, that's cool, but I urge you to come to an Atreyu show because you'll see, you'll really see and understand like who we are and you can really understand why the fuck we're here. <laughs> like, like <laughs> our shows are, are a blast. It's fun. Like you can see it on our faces and it's like, that's the only reason why we do this. So I urge people to like, if you were ever curious, come to a show and, and you'll understand. Yeah. Yeah. Cop it straight in the face. <laughs> 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 All right, I got one more for you. Uh, so, yeah, Atreyu, you named your band after a character from one of the most traumatizing kids' movies of the 80s. Yeah. If not the never ending story, uh, what mm -hmm. other movies and characters would be up for consideration? So, truth be told, literally in the conversation, the, at the time, we're sitting with our friend Scott, um, who worked for us for a long time. He's been he's friends with us since high school. And at the time, we were into, like, some other bands that had, like, sci-fi names. There was a band called Shai Halud that we were really yes. into. And it was like, what if we went kind of like the sci-fi route? Which is funny because no one in the band is, like, a big sci-fi nerd. Travis kind of is, but, like, that's it. Um, and he was like, oh, what about the Never Ending Story? We're like, yeah, that movie's sick. And it was like, what about Artex? And we're like, no, nah, that sounds like a power metal band. <laughs> and it was like, what about, what about Rockbiter? And we were like, that sounds like a joke dad rock band. It was like, okay, I train you. And it was like, oh, yeah, that sounds cool. Like, that was really <laughs> like, the, you know, uh, that was the as easy as the conversation was. Mm -hmm. But, um, yeah, uh, Rockbiter and Artex were in the conversation very briefly. <laughs> awesome. Well, thanks so much for taking some time out of your day to have a chat with us here at Sense Music Media. Uh, hope the uh, yeah album keeps going gangbusters and of course we really hope to see you when you get here next month for the tour uh, for the beautiful dark of life oh yeah stoked to get down there